Guten Abend meine Damen und Herren, mein Name ist Kevin Kaiser und ich begrüße Sie zu der Tagesschau. USA. In den USA wird momentan darüber diskutiert, dass es an der Zeit ist, die Studiengebühren an den Universitäten abzuschaffen und es schuldenfrei zu machen. Bernie Sanders, ein Befürworter dieses Vorhabens, würde als Präsident dafür kämpfen, dass jeder Amerikaner, der fleißig in der Schule lernt und ist, auf eine Universität gehen kann, unabhängig wie viel Geld die Eltern haben, ohne große Verschuldung. Er, veröffentlich, er veröffentlichte eine sechs einen Sechs-Schritte-Plan, den Bernie Sanders ergreifen wird, um Studierenden schuldenfrei zu machen. In Deutschland ist dieses Vorhaben zum Wintersemester bundesweit umgesetzt worden. Hessen schaffte zu diesem Semester die Studiengebühr ab und war somit das letzte Bundesland, das Studiengebühren erhob. Ob ein Bundesland Studiengebühren erhebt oder nicht, hängt von der jeweiligen Regierung des Bundeslandes ab. Diese fehlende Kosten, die dadurch an den Universitäten entstanden sind, muss nun die jeweilige Regierung im Bundesland tragen. Nach der Abschaffung der Studiengebühren, auch in Hessen, müssen Studenten bundesweit durchschnittlich 200 Euro pro Semester bezahlen. Diese 200 Euro beinhalten Bearbeitungsgebühr und Verwaltungsgebühren sowie einen Beitrag für das Studentenwerk. Zu diesen Kosten kommen natürlich noch Versicherungen, Miet- und Lebenhaltungskosten sowie Lernmittel wie Bücher, Skripte, Schreibutensilien und sonstige Kosten. Dass diese Kosten abgeschafft wurden, ist auf der einen Seite gut für die finanzielle Entlastung der Studenten, aber aufgrund der Abschaffung der Studiengebühren ähm, entscheiden sich immer mehr Jugendliche zu studieren, wie Sie hier in dieser Statistik sehen können. Das hat auf der anderen Seite zur Folge, dass ein paar Universitäten mit diesem Ansturm nicht zurechtkommen und die Hörsäle so überfüllt sind, dass manche Studenten sogar auf dem Fußboden oder auf den Treppenstufen sitzen müssen. Nicht alle Universitäten haben dieses Problem, aber es könnte eventuell noch in der Zukunft passieren, wenn sich etwas nicht ändert. Auch zu vermerken ist, dass eine Universität in Deutschland keineswegs so enorme Kosten wie eine Uni in den USA hat. Da der Campus viel kleiner ist, nicht so, viel, ist nicht so eine Vielfalt an Freizeitaktivitäten bietet, wie zum Beispiel ein sehr modernes Fitnessstudio mit Schwimmhalle, Kletterwand, Sauna und vielen Basketballplätzen oder ein Kino. Die Hörsäle, Labore, Bibliothek und Lernplätze sind dagegen aber sehr gut ausgestattet und modern. Das Studentenleben in Deutschland ist einfach anders als in Amerika. Ein Student verbringt seine Zeit zum Studieren auf dem Campus und in seiner Freizeit bietet die Stadt, in der sich seine Universität befindet, viele Freizeitmöglichkeiten. Somit muss die Regierung nur die Kosten für das Studieren und den Studenten tragen. In the United States, there are just a few types of higher learning institutions. These include community colleges, liberal arts colleges, and the typical university. Universities in America are either public or private, and the amount of time it usually takes an undergraduate to receive a bachelor's degree is four years. According to the National Center of Education Statistics, 20.2 million students are enrolled in the fall 2015 semester. In these graphs you can see the average growth of student enrollment in universities. In fact, students that graduated this past spring graduated with a record-breaking average of $35,000 of tuition debt. As you can see from the graph, the amount of debt students graduate with each year steadily increases. Some might say, that in a decade or so, a better alternative is to go straight to work right after high school and forego the debt. 
the primary reason for increasing the levels of debt students hold when they graduate is because of the constant rise of tuition prices. Here's a graph put together by our news team's finest that displays the average price of tuition per year since 1982. As you can see, the tuition prices enjoy a steady ascent similar to student debt levels. According to Sally May, the primary lender of student debt, student debt levels are not as bad as previous graphs depict. Sally May data shows that students are providing more on their own and receiving more grants and scholarships. And simultaneously, student and parent borrowing is waning. Um, the answer to that question is somewhat complicated because the German school system is a lot more complicated than the American school system. Um, also, homeschooling is not, it's, it's considered illegal in Germany. You're not allowed to do that. Okay, so the German school system. Now, I'd like to preface by saying that I'm not an expert on the German school system and all the fine, fine details, um, but I'll do my best to explain it and give, and give a pretty good overview of the system. Okay, so here it goes. Everyone goes to elementary school together. This is called Grundschule, I think, basically like basic school, ground school. Um, and uh, yeah, so everyone goes to this school together, and this is the first to fourth grade. Now, based off of your performance at this school, um, your teacher that's been advising you for the past four years, at the end, um, assesses you and sees, you know, and basically decides which school you will go into next. This is where it gets complicated. The schools um, split up after elementary school. So um, I'm pretty sure parents have the um, the ability to override a teacher's decision. Um, and again, this decision is also based off of, you know, your academic performance, social skills, confidence level, and so on. Um, so yeah, parents... I'm pretty sure they have the ability to override the teacher's decision, but um, I've been told typically they respect the uh, the teacher's decision. Now this is where it gets complicated. The I'm I'm going to be focusing mainly on just the main schools that are available. Um, there's so the lowest of the schools available is called the Hauptschule, and this is um, from the fifth to tenth grade, and I have done internships in schools like this before, and I mean, I found the, um, I mean, the kids were great, but uh, the education and the lessons themselves were at a much slower pace, and obviously they, they end pretty early in the 10th grade. And when you go to this school, you cannot go to university. The certification or whatever you get when you finished just disallows you from studying at a university later on. That's one thing. Um, you're most certainly going into some sort of vocational job, entry-level job, I mean, your basic jobs, yeah? And because they end in the 10th grade, typically they don't just start a job because they're still pretty young. They go on and do some sort of further training for something else specific. But it's not necessarily looked down upon. I mean, Hauptschulen, they have their reputation. Um, for being kind of like rough schools, but I mean, when you go on and you become something that you know doesn't necessarily have to do with business or engineering or anything like that, it's not it's not necessarily um, disrespected or anything like that. So, because there's split up like that, and it's it's just normal, it's just completely normal in this society, unlike in the United States. Now, uh, the next type. Of, so that's the Hauptschule. The next type of school is called a um, Gesamtschule, um, and there's also something called a Realschule, and um, it's a little bit higher up, but I'm going to talk about the Gesamtschule um, a little bit more. Gesamtschule is a, is a um, combination of Hauptschule and Realschule, and it's kind of the middle ground school. And at this school, you are, I'm pretty sure it also lasts from the 5th to 10th grade, may, maybe a little bit later on. Um, yeah, so at this school, um, you, um, you're allowed to, 
you can go into the same sorts of jobs as you would at um at a regular Hauptschule, but also something you can get at a Gesamtschule is called is what's called a Fach Abitur, and this um, an Abitur is like um kind of like this like diploma sort of thing, and um, you can with this you can go on and study at university. So there is a university track at this school. Um, it's a little bit more focused. Um, so Fach in German means subject. So this is um you know something with more specificity. In that you're you're not studying something very general. It's it's typically your um, I don't know, like business, engineering, architecture, things like that that are very um kind of specific and not your um, liberal arts degrees. That's that's um so yeah. Gesamtschule is uh, is still res is very well respected and you can um you can do really good things with it. So that's the Gesamtschule and it's the middle school. Um, I mean middle ground, not the equivalent of middle school in the U.S. Now the next school is called the Gymnasium and um, like I said earlier that's the type of school that I'm teaching at um, right now and in this this school is um, highly regarded and um, is considered to, to be the best of the three main schools available for German school children and at this school it's a lot more general it's um it, the, the education is a lot more fast-paced um, I mean, the students that I have are very, very um, talented, very talented, um, and I think it has to do with, um, you know, they've been assessed at an early age, um, and these, I mean, based off of that assessment, these are to be considered the best of, um, the best students that, um, the best students available, I guess you could say, yeah? Um, Anyway, at this school, you're learning um, a number of different things. The um, the curriculum is very diverse, and uh, you have a little bit more freedom of what you'd like to choose as subjects and things like that, what you'd like to focus on. And when you finish, yeah, and I forgot to say, 5th to 12th or 13th grade, it depends on which state you're in. Um, now, when you finish this, you get what's called an abitur, it's a normal abitur, and you can go on and study at um, university with this. I think both systems can be um, good for the right person, can provide good um, a really good education, but I would say that the German school system prepares students better for life in general, because <clears throat> you know it's um, it's not necessarily disrespected. Um, to go into one profession versus another profession. I mean, kid, the kids are split up early. It's become a social norm that some people are going to do voc vocational jobs that are necessary to society, and some people are going to go on and do other types of jobs, um, whether it's business, banking, or any sort of um, liberal, liberal arts um, uh, degree. Um, I mean, people sometimes... The, rag on it because it, it could potentially have a psychological effect if someone, I mean, it's difficult to assess someone when they're in the fourth grade, um, but, uh, and, and pe sometimes people say that it has a negative psychological effect on the kids that end up in the Hauptschule or anything like that because they, um, they feel like they're less, um, like they're not as good. Um, but also I should mention that you can switch between schools, um, and I mean, if you perform well in the Hauptschule and you want to move up to the Gymnasium, I've seen kids do that before, and I've also seen kids that were assessed and were placed in the Gymnasium that did not perform well and were bumped down to, you know, one of the other different lower schools. So, that's it. I know we do have a lot of FAFSA stuff that you could fill out that does help students, but it still doesn't cover everything. And um, like where I come from is a very low income area. And so it would really help people going through that to help them maybe 
possibly get out of poverty and get the education. Um, it would also help for students who don't, who make more than the FAFSA and who have a really hard time um, getting scholarships because it's very much, you either have to be very academic based and be really smart or you have to be really poor to get money and it's really hard for those students that are in between that spectrum to get money so it would also help them out as well to be able to get that kind of stuff. So I think it could be useful. I think, you know, it would be going towards a useful thing. Um, if you have the taxes, it's not, it's actually helping people further their education and to be able to help them and it's not like it's a higher tax rate that is um, going towards something else. It's going towards something that's useful. So I gotcha. think, you know, once you once it's implemented and people got used to it, it wouldn't be as big of a deal. I think at first a lot of people would be upset, but I just think it was incorporated into your everyday life when you got used to it. Gotcha. Um, I think that it definitely proposes problems because as a child you have a lot of factors that play into it and you know if they got incorrectly tested on what path it could affect them for the rest of their lives I think that if they implemented a system they would have to make sure that it's really good and that it incorporates, you know, maybe something that's going on in the child's personal life that, you know, could affect the testing and they have to really make sure they take in a bunch of aspects before they um, send them down that path. If it's a path that, like, set, sets their education for, like, the rest of their life, it should definitely